the MX5 practice session. It's about to take place. Are you recording? Yeah. So the MX5 practice session is about oh, to. Wait, am I? Yeah, I am. <laughs> Hi guys. <laughs> we have arrived at Silverstone. So we are at Silverstone because there is a 750 motor club event which is one of the oldest running motor sports or motor companies. Wait. Oh shit. Yeah, that's all gonna be unusable. I'm gonna have to do it again. I don't know if you could hear it though. It was very You probably fine. could though. Because if they hear it, they'll, anyway, right. The MX-5 <laughs> practice session's about to take place. You can't to do that thing. <laughs> <laughs> so the reason, the reason we're laughing is because I just filmed that exact thing, but there's, <laughs> How am I? Is any of this gonna go in? <laughs> so um, the reason that was the whole thing was because while we were filming earlier, but there was music in the background, they announced that the MX-5 practice session's taken place. So we're at Silverstone. It's like touring car, but on a budget, basically, is the best way to do it. So they do like MX-5 onlys, they do retro hot hatches, current hot hatches, front wheel drive, rear wheel drive, uh, like uh, four, four, cylinder, I was going to say, like maximum two litre, those sort of things. So basically, all you'd have to do is have a racing licence, get safety equipment, roll cage, get your car track, uh, what's it called, prepped, as in, um, so it passes scrutineering, and uh, then you can do it. Literally, it's that simple. So you just apply, you pay monthly, what? That simple. It's that simple, you just Make do, sure you do all of those steps. Yeah, have the money for it too. Yeah, basically you need about six grand to do at least one event. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so yeah, so today I'm here because I want to watch it, because I want to do it at some point, like in the future, I'd like to know sort of, well, I'd want to do it basically. So before I spend loads of money on doing it, I, I came here because I thought, if I do like a hot hatch one and I watch them, obviously whoever's bloody, whoever's in first, has probably got the fastest car. So whenever I do it later on, I can just spec my car like his. That's the plan anyway. So yeah, so we come out here today to have a nice little day out, watch a bunch of track, Watch a, bunch <laughs> watch a bunch of races and uh, enjoy ourselves. So yeah, uh, I, I thought I'd take you along, probably show you some cars, show you some track footage. Yeah, let's get into this. Let's go and watch a bunch of cars. <laughs> let's watch a bunch of cars. So the first stop, we're going to the Silverstone shop. Oh, just spotted a Cayman GTS and a Cayman GT4 and a Carrera 4S. I like the blue one. Very nice. Yeah, the blue one. Yeah, I mean, I want a GT4. Yeah, the Porsche GT, the Cayman GT4 is stunning. Right, which which one was it? What one are we getting? Was it the pink one? Yeah, maybe. The little Zara. That she can wear. Yeah. We also spotted one of these. What one of these did you want, Jade? I think the shop as you saw we got a hoodie a top a baby grow two key rings one each and the little flask thing yeah. try and guess how much it was I mean it's to be sort of expected you're at a gift shop you know blah 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 but it was 120 pound which was quite a lot I didn't expect to spend that that much to be honest we're just sort of walking the track at the moment. I know a couple of the stands are open, but not all of them. So we're just sort of going around seeing what stands are open and what ones we can sort of get a good sort of vantage point of the track sessions. So yeah, that looks shut, but we'll have a look. I forgot what I was going to say, but I thought something to say. 
No, I've lost it. Sorry. That stand annoying you would have been perfect to sit on. Silverstone 6, seats 30 to 51. We've got a lovely braking zone onto our right here. So we'll probably get some nice footage here. This morning, five races will come up ahead of last single seater races for the a couple of new drivers as well went well yesterday. Uh, Thomas Westworth, he finished eighth. Good news. Eight year old from Bedford. Uh, number 69. Oh, number eight is a lovely car. Let's go short. We want number eight to win, mainly because it's my favourite number. Mainly because it's my favourite number and it is a really nice colour. Oh, they sound good, don't they? They sound very good. Uh, looks like Matt Higginson's got a fantastic start in his green machine as they come down to the bottom. There you go. 63, 69, 80, 69 a second. Number 8 on the outside. Oh my god. Number 8, he kept his position. Oh, can he get him? Can he get him? Oh, he's gaining. Number 8 is gaining on number 41. And the one car that started on wet tyres, by the way, was the pole sitter, Rob Bailey. Anyway, our, our blue number eight, he was 10th or 11th. Yeah. He was having a battle with number... He was having a battle with someone. Number 41, I think. But yeah, I tell you what, the cars sound absolutely incredible. They're really fast. I don't know what engines they've got, but they're really cool. Um, they're on their cool down lap now, so luckily they're not as low as they once were. But yeah, so far we've had the one-seater cars go out, and I don't know what's next. Oh my god, my hair! So we're gonna move to a different part of the track, get more shots of whatever's out next, which I think is the 182 club, which I assume is like a Clio Cup 182 club. Um, yeah, so hopefully we're gonna get some cool shots of them coming down the straight. We'll move a bit, get them going away, move a bit more, and then I'll probably do a walk of the paddock and stuff like that and have a look in the pits and stuff like that because that'd be really cool. And then we're going to get in a stand for the hot hatches because that's what I'm really interested in. See that fence up there, Jade? See the fence up there? Yeah. Rush to it! I won! <laughs> Last time we were in Silverstone, that's exactly where I parked my car in the show, right there, on that grass, right where, right in front of that massive stand that's now there. Crazy. Bird. Cleos. So it turns out the 182, the 182 Cup also has 197s and 200s. So clear 182, clear 182, clear 197, clear 182, clear 197, clear 182, clear 182. Right guys, they've just done up that. Th Let's try that again. Right guys, they've just done their warm up lap. Holy sugar, that's close. 
Wow, first and second are really close. That's crazy. Look at that. I tell you what, first and second are so close. What I have noticed, look, 197, 197, 197, 197. 197 is clearly our faster than 182s, clearly. But look at that, because they're all in the same car, virtually, and the power's all the same. It's such a close, in, it's so much closer in the race. Gee, Chad. Red's gonna do why? Okay, what's well, the blue one? Go number one, we love your colour. There's first and second, they're so close. That battle's been going on the entire race. watched the Clio Cup race, the 197s are definitely faster than the 182. There wasn't a single 197 behind another 182. So clearly the 197s were faster, but that battle between all of them and that like mid pack was so close. This is a dead end. <laughs> was so close. Um, so yeah, it was really interesting because it was, because the cars are all pretty much identical, they probably have like different exhausts, different injectors, different tyres, blah, blah, blah. So there'll be slight micro differences but because generically all the cars are the same it was so close all the racing was so close it was all up to the driver's skill and like you know left foot braking all sorts and uh yeah no it was really cool to see it was cool to see how close like they were going three abreast into the corners like yeah that was crazy that was a really good race so yeah now we're going to walk over to the stand and get some stand shots so yeah meet you over there so we're having lunch now really <laughs> Jesus, all right. I've got a ham and cheese bagel. Jade's got a ham and cheese bagel. Yep. <laughs> good? Yeah, really good. So far, really good. The racing's really good. Mm. Um, Some very nice cars here. A lot of Porsches, weirdly. It's like a lot of Porsche owners love race cars. Race, car, car racing. <laughs> We're going to go over to the stand next. And we're going to watch probably the race before hot hatches and the hot hatch race. I also think we can go in the pits. I think we have access to the pits. Mm. Yeah. I don't know where they are, but I'm pretty sure we have access to them. So. Well, I found the pit stop cafe. <laughs> Great. <laughs> For the record, that's not hard. It's right. It's right there. I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's right in front of us. Oh, yeah. So during the lunch break, I'm gonna walk the paddock and the pits. Hey, Jake. What now? Guess. Yeah, they do. People are watching, <laughs> right, guys? <laughs> I can subscribe. <laughs> yeah, I hope you're enjoying this video. Sorry, I finished my mouth again. <laughs> you should take a bite and then go. Oh, I've got something to say and show. Oh, I forgot how good. Cherry Lucasade. I've got an orange Lucasade Sport. I hope you're enjoying this video. Sorry. <laughs> I hope you're enjoying this video. It's a little bit different. And uh, I'm looking forward to the Hot Hatch series because I actually want to do it hopefully one day. Um, I really wish I watched the MR2 one yesterday of Dan Sylvester. Also, I actually did see him in the Silverstone shop. But I, I did bottle it a little bit and I was like, I'll just leave him. But um, yeah, I was like, oh, Dan Sylvester, that's Danny DC2. But yeah, I, the whole reason I'm actually here is because I saw his MR2 series that he did with the 750 Motor Club where he entered it, did three, I think he did three races in his first season, then he did almost all of it in his second season. Um, and oh, then like how much, that. yeah, Catrums. That's cool. And how much it would cost for you, if you, like if I wanted to do it, how much it would cost. 
because he did like a whole spreadsheet on it, which was really helpful. It, you know, basically convinced me that if I ever got that sort of money spare, I'd definitely invest in, I'd definitely want to do this sort of thing. Although that's why I'm obviously watching Hot Hatchel next, because I think that's the one I sort of want to do. But yeah, and I saw him in a shop, I was like, oh, Jade, that's, that's Dan Sylvester, that's Danny DC too. Yeah, and uh, she sort of said, like, oh, I'll get a photo. And I was like, oh, no, no, I'm sure I'll see him later. I'll leave him, I'll leave him be. I'm sure I'll see him later. I don't know how, yeah, I don't know why that comes to my head. Like, somehow we're going to bump, I mean, if we do, that'd be class. So, if by the end of this video, there's a photo of me and Danny DC too, that'd be pretty cool, but I don't think there's going to be. Also, he's really tall. I, I didn't know he was that tall. He's like 6'2". Mm. Like, I'm 5'10 slash 5'11. I'm like 5'10 and a half. But yeah, and he's tall. Tall guy. So uh, yeah, so hopefully, see him around, get a, actually get a photo. Ooh, and I won't bottle it, nice. but uh, yeah. Number 27. I'll enjoy lunch and uh, we'll get some footage from the stand. See you in a bit. On the photo. Oh, my God. 
pressure from the three cars behind. And the uh, new fastest lap from the field right from the lap record. Basically, all EP3s were first. I think they have three different categories. They have A class, B class, and C class, which I think is power to weight. So, like A class was like 190 horsepower per ton. Then it was like 175, then 160, I think, something like that. Um, yeah. So A class was literally dominated by EP3 Civics. Then it was B class, which was like Saxos, I think. And then it was like C class, which was like I think like 1.6s. So it was like a an EG 1.6. What else was there? 106, 105, and some other stuff, basically. <laughs> we just watched the hot hatch. Yes, we just watched the hot hatch race. Also, I didn't mention like two seconds ago. So close. Like the battles were so good. They were battling like loads of different cars. Like all the basically all the EP3s were battling, and then it was like their Saxos, Peugeot 106s. Uh, Fiesta STs, though, like uh, one series, they were all battling. But yeah, basically, if you want to win A class, get an EP3. If you want to win B class, uh, I think that was a couple of cars, and C class was it was it was a bit more even B and C. But A class was literally just dominated by EP3s. So um, I think I, I definitely really want to do it. So if I ever have the money or when I get the money to be able to do it, I want to enter B. Oh, that Fiesta's going to part next to me. No, it's not. Legend. Uh, if I ever want to enter it, I think I'm going to start with B or C class. Because then that way, uh, I won't be just like battered by EP3s. I can pick a car that's probably going to be pretty good anyway. And then just learn the ropes sort of feed into it and get better and better over time um so yeah i think like i said the one the one the b and the c is like capped at 160 or 170 or 150 uh 
break per ton. Um, so yeah, it should be good. But yeah, I really enjoyed it. It looks sick. I definitely want to do it. It's just, you know, time and place sort of thing where, when it's sort of um, financially able. Um, yeah, I'll give it a go. But yeah, super fun to watch. We're going to probably walk the paddock now, hopefully look at the pits and uh, yeah, go from there. But I just thought I'd give you my raw reaction to just watching the all of those races and the, that ep 3s engine exploding, which is pretty bad. Yeah. And uh, I think another Peugeot died and then another Clio died. Um, not in such spectacular fashion, but uh, yeah. So yeah, let's go. They look so cool. They really break down to like, literally these cars literally pull apart. So literally twice then. It's like Lego. Yeah, they literally disintegrate. It's weird. Very strange. Clio's? couple of Clio's. <laughs> oh, there's that absolutely rapid EP3. He was, uh, was that him? No, it wasn't him. Someone else. Oops. Catrums. Oh, they're crazy, aren't they? Look at that. Proper track cars. I mean, obviously, they all are. BTCC Leon FR, let's go. Always representing. Missed the MX-5s going out. Mark 1 MX-5. Headlight elite for an intake. Pretty cool. That clear was absolutely rapid. Didn't see that one, I don't think. What an absolute unit of a camper that is. Oh my god. That's more than a hobby for him, surely. MX-5s. F-Type. Tell you what, some people have a lot of money in this MX-5s. This is crazy. For a second I thought he had like Ashto on the door. I was like, well that's going a bit far. <laughs> so it only drives them the most oh look! Oh, MX5 nice. Central. The Royal Navy Air Force. Let's go have a look at some of these. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the DC2. DC2. Jeez. Which one? The Ibiza. Say it. Oh, he got rid of the set badge and put a brake light thing. That's so cool. Janetta. Oh, that's so sick. Oh. Oh, the Volvo. Oh, the Volvo looks wicked. Oh, that looks absolutely wicked. I was just saying, like, the MX-5s look lovely. <laughs> yes, Jake, this right forces you to talk more. Well, I mean, there's not... I mean, other than just looking and actually talking to the people, which cringes me out already, um, there's not a lot to say really, it's just like, you know, I'm just going around looking at what what people are using, what sort of cars they're using, what sort of wheels they're using, because obviously there must be probably lighter wheels that people go for. I know there has to be certain specs with like widths and diameters, but that doesn't stop you getting like an ultra light pair of wheels. Absolute unit of that. Like someone's turned, like someone's here racing against someone else that could be on a budget and turns up in that. Like how's that fair? Like, I assume there isn't a budget. Oh, Z4. Three litre as well. That's rare. It's rusting at the bottom of the door, which is unfortunate. But what do you think of that? I think they look lovely. I think it looks really good. Yeah, it looks smart. I like that. Oh, that is cool. Yeah, three litre as well. Three litre straight six. That's nice. Ah, a little Ford Fiesta. Oh, the door is so nice. Kill switches. Proper bucket seats. Oh. That is nice. Number eight. Number eight. Hey, big up. Minimum weight 830 kilos. So it has to be that or heavier. Oh, we missed all of them. Both like a bunch of Vauxhall Novas, from what I can see. And that sounds obvious, like the Royal Navy Motorsport, like obviously they should be in the Royal Navy, but for some reason I didn't actually think they were. Like it wasn't until like those actual like Royal Navies were past, I was like, oh yeah, because they are actually just from the Royal Navy. <laughs> like I thought it was like sponsored or something, but it's like, no, they actually have a team. It's quite cool. 
Um, we also missed the MR2 class. And also apparently there's like a Vauxhall Nova, which I assume is like a retro hot hatch. No pleasure with six. Bloody adorable. It's just so cool. Like you literally never see that anywhere else. Set exhaust, it was cool. Now, if I'm not mistaken, we have Mark 1 MR2s, Mark 2 MR2s. Oh, people are going to crucify me if that's a Mark 2 and that's a Mark 3. I can't remember. I'm pretty sure that's a Mark 1 and that's a Mark 2. There's a couple of them, eh? Look at all this. Yeah, Mark, I'm sure Mark 1, Mark 2, and I think there's a Mark 3, but I don't know what the difference between the Mark 3 is. Cool though. Yeah, so this is the series that Danny DC2 races in, the MR2 series. Um, apparently one of the cheaper, better ones to get into, but obviously because they're sort of mid-engine rear-wheel drive, they're not easy to drive either, so I don't think I'd be too brave to do that just yet. Car being dynoed in there. Look at that, dynoed. It's quite cool, live on track. Peugeot 205 to turn right. Hey, we're going through the tunnel. It's weird because we've actually driven through this many a time for a car show, but not. Yeah, walking under it, weird. I revved my car in here when we came to Silverstone for, oh, what was it? Spring Action Day or something like that? In case you didn't know where we were, Silverstone. So if I'm not mistaken, this is the old pit straight where Lewis Hamilton and Verstappen absolutely hooned it down here. Someone tapped someone on the inside of this corner and someone ended up in that barrier over there. We won't name, obviously names, but Verstappen and Hamilton. Happened, but there's a safety uh, car. So away from the tarmac, that's going to be too dodgy to do a live snatch from. So we are under safety car for the first time today here at uh, Silverstone in, in the races. So uh, a shame there, but it is uh, 93. Then Ben Abbott that leads. Second is 55. George King. Third number 17. Dave Richardson. Fourth number 9. Ian Tomlinson. Fifth is 21. Matthew Neal. 
There's a lot of them, isn't there? Jesus. I mean, it's 37 they started, but I know it's been a good practice in that time. Number 98! Focus on the camera! No, focus on the camera, focus on the car, not the bloody fence, you stupid camera. To the outside. Don't think he can go through there at uh, Cops Corner, Matt. But uh, the top three are right together. Yeah, certainly are. Already broke away from Ian Tomlinson, haven't they? So here we go. It's almost fanning out three wide. George King is about under uh, pressure here from Oak Richardson as they work their way through the right-hander. But still for now, the race leader is Ben Abbott, the purple car number 93. Steps a little bit wide there as they exit Beckett's corner. But now George King will probably get a push. Trying to go around the outside of George King, he can't quite get that, and that is bringing Ian Tomlinson back into the equation. The fourth race driver. The car off of Lapfield is the ball from yesterday's Tigers Townsend car number 69, and the marshals are trying to push it out of the ground, but it's going anywhere. I'm afraid, so it's in a kind of an awkward position. You see the marshals are pushing the Pete Seeley car out of the ground out of there at Cox Corner. The leaders have gone through. Simon Wing 2.1 seconds ahead of Adam Jewett, and up to third now has come John Cobley in that Sayer Vitsa, so he's got plenty of pace after that mistake early on. Uh, so Mark White has dropped to fourth, and Ben Gundry and Alex Smith complete the top six. Um, as uh, the race then continues to lose a, a big old gap to try and close down for the Blue Sayat. So Chris Camp's still there in fifth position and he's having a good battle with, uh, by the looks of it, number 53. That's a car, another car that's pitted is Ryan Margulies, number 144, the BMW 116. He got caught up in that incident which eliminated the Scott Townsend Fiesta. The Snatch Tractor's heading towards that hill, so we're going to do that with the local yellows. We've got yellow flags and cops. I do like the say I beat that in this group, that is very nice, and also, that Volvo, that is so retro touring car, I love it. Uh, stops it from getting towards the barrier, so uh, it's good in a way that it has stopped. Jade likes yeah, the mini. Damage. Yeah, I think it was 29, then black it. Also, this MX-5 is roll cage inside, it's pretty hilarious. Cocked corner. So the green of the roll cage. This 370 Z looks really cool, but it keeps spinning. Under these circumstances. But as they come through, then it's one of eight speeds. Using this next car restart for challenge on the inside line to Brookland. Oh, Simon Wing stays ahead and then runs out wide. And because he ran out wide, Adam Jewis slotted through. So the box on down the, the Astra is out front. So they come out of Luffield. There's three and a half minutes of this race to go. And it's Adam Jewis for the first time at the lead. Simon Wing is there in second place. The Mark B car in the box of the Class A car, the Peugeot. That's got a bit more power. Great big players coming out the back of the Peugeot 205. Adam Jewis is hanging on. You said the fastest lap of the race there, which went on the top of the grid. So the cars are now in position. So the green flag is made for the back. And round three of the Swallow Hill Pose. F1 Valve Championships in the red light. Very close in second place with three cars. Fair enough, they're going to have to wear out some of the pieces. pieces. This is obviously the thing I want to do happily, and uh, the warm up batch is going, and then uh, race will begin, so this is quite cool. Here they all go. The main battle is this EV3. Some of the 
Hi guys, it's the end of the day. It's the end of the 750 Motor Club event at Silverstone. It was really good. Uh, if you're coming to one of these ones, there are a couple of things I would recommend. If it's gonna rain, bring a coat and an umbrella. Uh, it's quite windy, especially in the stands. So definitely wrap up warm. Like I had a t-shirt, jumper and a coat on and it was still cold. So yeah, I wasn't like freezing, but yeah, just something to bear in mind. Um, definitely bring like your own food. There, there was a couple of like burger vans and stuff like that, but not many. So I wouldn't recommend like bringing a picnic. But overall, really good. All oh, seeing like retro hot hatches, and then like like basically mini F1 cars and the actual hot hatches and um, what else was there? Like the really flat cars. I don't know what they were called. They're like 750 cc cars, but they were sick. So yeah, highly recommend it. Um, I never saw Dan at the end, so. One day I might see him again. Yeah, thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.